Hello everybody, this is me again and I'm going to start a new series of videos related to storing information on an iOS device. Now, before we start talking about core data, the topic of this series is going to be core data. Let's talk about the different ways you can store information on an on iOS device. Now, there are different alternatives. One way is to use what we call the UI document class, where you, use, you store files and things like that. There's another way you can use what we call archiving. Uh, there's another way which uses SQLite, which is very similar to SQL, but um, database, but it's a, in a smaller scale that resides on the device. And we have, uh, uh, Apple have uh, something called Core Data Framework, which is, uh, basically a wrapper, whatever you want to call it, a, a bridge between your app and the storage environment on your device, Okay, in particular SQLite. I'm going to talk about these in more details in a minute. So let's go ahead and start. In this video, I'm just going to explain the concept of core data, and in the next video, we will do an app. But it, I think it's an important, it is important to understand the different parts of core data. As I said, Core Data is a framework by Apple that acts as a bridge between your app and an SQL Lite, SQL Lite, and maybe other storage, other storage environment. Just like SQL, you have actually tables. We call them entities. All right, entities, tables, the same. And you have also relationships, and then you have queries. Okay, you can also have. Uh, the, 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 the nice thing about core data, you don't need to know anything about SQL syntax. So for some of you that are familiar with SQL, where you have to know the syntax for selecting, the syntax for uh, updating, the syntax for inserting, the syntax for deleting, all of these, there are syntax for SQL. So the nice thing about this core data, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to know, worry about all of this. The, the second advantage, which is really important, is that in SQL, you have relational database. You have records and tables and rows and all, I mean, records, tables, rows, all of these, and fields. Uh, and you cannot really represent objects in an, in an easy way. The nice thing about this core data, it actually you can represent classes and objects. So you will almost have like, object-oriented database, okay, which fits very well in your uh, application development framework uh, in iOS or, or object-oriented environment, okay? So that is, that's, that's two big advantages over SQLite. All right, there are some important terms that we really need to know so you understand what they mean. One of them is called the managed object model. Now what is this? When you create an app, Xcode allow you to design your classes, if you will, your entities, and you can also have in this model, so it's a graphical user way of defining your classes, modeling tool, your relationships, and if you have any queries that you can all design it in this model. Okay, so once I define my model, you can do what? You can have what we call manage object, managed object, okay, which they are, which they are basically the objects that you create in your app. Think about this: if you have contacts, every contact is an object. You have properties for that object. Uh, if you have stores, like they see in the previous example, you can have an array of stores. So instead of having arrays of stores, arrays of objects in hard coded into your program, this arrays of objects comes from your database and each, uh, each object, basically, like if you have a store object, each object represents a row in your entity, okay, or table, all right? So the managed object is important. Managed object, managed object is a class, it's an object that represents the class or a row in your uh, entity. Okay. The other terms that we have, it's a very important one because this is the heart of everything. We interact through this managed, what we call it managed object context. 
uh, all the relationships, all the statuses of your objects are maintained within this layer. Okay, the manage object context. Okay, it uses the model that you've created, and it keeps tracks of all the objects. It uh, interact with your underlying database. So if when I want to save, I go through this object, and then I issue a command called save, for example, and then that this context object will handle all the uh, the, uh, the the uh, all the stuff that need to be done in order to save your record or your object into a database on your device. Okay, so this is this is important. The manage object. Okay, context. There is the persistent object. It, I'm not going to talk about it too much. There is another one. The persistent object coordinator. Those things really we don't really mess with them. It's basically the underlying storage. Uh, database and in storage environment. Okay, but I just want you to understand what they mean. All right, the next part is that what are the steps that we need to do in order to use to create uh, to use core data? First, when we create a new app, usually we type in the app name here, and then and then we select the language and the phone. And usually, this is not checked. So if you want to use core data, we check this. And then what it does, it, add all the, it adds the framework, form, framework and everything that I need in order to start using the core data. So that's the first step. The second step is that you create your model. Now, I'm not going to show it to you in the, in the presentation here, but once we start doing the example, you'll see it. So you can define your, you can create your model, that, like the classes, and if there is any relationships, you define your relationships between these, uh, these objects or entities. After you define your model, what you need to do, you need to create the SWIFT representations of, or the object, Objective-C representations of these classes. And the way you do it, you select the entity from the model, and then you click on this. You can go into Editor. And from there, you can say create an uh, managed object, and then you select your model, which we will see when we're doing the tutorial. Then you select the entity that you want to generate the class for, and next, now it creates the class for you. All right. After we create the classes, we need to, in the data, and, and, and sorry, in the code, what you need to do is that you need to get access to these things. First, you get access to your managed object context. If this is usually comes from the app delegate, and then we'll see example of that. Then you can get a description of your entities from your model again, and you will cast those to the class that was generated by the by Xcode. Uh, you can change the attributes of your entities and then you can run commands such as saving the record or fetching records okay that's that's really a very simple way of looking on uh, of how we uh, use code data of course there's a lot more you can read the you can read the uh, the documentation by apple if you want to do more but this is the basic stuff that you need in order to start using the code data in the next example, we're going to create an app. We're going to create. We're going to create a model, very similar to the previous videos where we have a, a basically a database with stores, and in the stores we can represent the data in a different way. One way is that you know we'll use, for example, the the uh, strings for some of the fields. We'll use binary data to to store images. Uh, and then we will be able to uh, create record, uh, view the records, list them in a, in a table format, and so forth. All right? So we're done with this. Very basic stuff, but I think you'll understand it when we uh, start creating the app. But this is very important that you have an idea what are the different parts of your of the core data. And I'll see you in a few minutes in the next video.